anyone watching this can agree that some of those things will be useful to them. That's not the right way that I want to phrase that. <laughs> My name is Michael, and as someone who is pursuing a career in entertainment, I've gone through some periods in time already where I've just not been feeling the creativity or the passion in my life as much as what first got me into it. And I know I'm not alone in that. I've had friends of all different kinds of professions, from actors to directors to painters to dancers to just creative hobbyists. They've all gone through something like this, where there's just some time period, whether it's days or weeks or even months, where the creativity and passion just isn't there. So, what can we do to maintain or keep up that creativity? Well, I've discovered five tips for myself that helps me through these tough times, and I'll share them here in hope that anyone else that's going through a dry spell of creativity or passion can use these and help themselves get out of that funk. Number five is write down every idea. Now, with the notes section in iPhones, this is very easy for someone that writes or acts or performs or something like that. But say you're someone that works with more visual arts and you're away from home, you're away from your studio, you're away from wherever you can create but you have an idea that you want to hold on to or use as the inspiration for your next idea. Honestly, the idea of just having something written down in that moment, no matter how flushed out it is, no matter how simple or complex it might be, having that in there can always be a great bouncing spot for your creativity when the time is right. So when you go into that studio or when you are at your computer writing, you know, two days, three days from then, you can take a quick look at your notes, see what was inspiring you back then, and then work from there. Occasionally it's not going to work and you'll hit a dead end, but at least you'll have something to bounce off of rather than trying to remember that one funny idea you had 48 hours or 72 hours ago. Number four is having accountability. Now, if you're like me and you're creating projects or videos on your own time by yourself, it can be very easy to push deadlines down the road. You know, you can give yourself one week and then one week turns into two weeks and then two weeks turns into a month. And before you know it, five months have gone by and you haven't really created anything. But if you have someone from the outside holding you responsible to those deadlines, your work ethic can increase dramatically. Now this idea was actually introduced to me by an acting studio that I go to, and I can vouch for the effectiveness of this. All of 2021, I've had a group of friends keep me accountable for making videos like this one. And because I have those outside influences and those outside motivating factors to keep me responsible and keep me working on ideas like this, no matter how simplistic or complex they can be, it's always something and it's something I can present to them and something I can present to myself as proof that I'm doing work and I'm getting stuff done. Number three is to set ambitious yet attainable goals. Now this ties in back to the accountability idea in terms of wanting to create things that you know are going to push you creatively, but at the same time aren't going to be so impossible. I like to think of it as going to the gym. If you're going to the gym for the very first time, you're not going to be able to bench press 150 pounds right off the bat, unless you're a freak of nature, in which case let me know because I want those secrets. But if you're just a newbie at something like that, you have to start at the lower end of things. But on the flip side, if you're at the gym and for the first three months you're doing nothing but bicep curls with five pound dumbbells, you're gonna hit a plateau pretty quickly. So you have to find that nice balance of making sure that you give yourself something that you can do, but something that's gonna push you just a little bit harder and stretch and train those creativity muscles in a way that you haven't really tried before. That idea of in the gym world of progressive overload can work in the same way in terms of creativity. Number two is to look at your previous work. As creators and entertainers and performers, there are times where no matter what, we're gonna just feel like we're in a standstill, like progress isn't really being made. And because our careers and our goals tend to span across many, many years, it can feel like there's a lot of time, particularly months long periods of time where nothing's being done and nothing is being improved. It's during those times that I highly recommend you go back and look at some of your previous work, whether it's a previous painting you did, a previous sculpture that you had worked on, or a previous scene that you filmed, any one of these things. If you can look back at it and go, hmm, yeah, that is, that's the best thing I've ever done and I haven't done anything like it since, then you know that you're in a certain place that you could really use a little bit of a nudge in the right direction to get that creativity going. And like I said in tip number three, setting something a little more ambitious for you to push you just that little bit extra. But on the flip side, if you can look at something that you did maybe one year ago or two years ago, and you can look at it with fresh eyes and say, yeah, I would change this element or I would add this new feature to it, then that's a clear sign that you have grown and improved as a performer and a creator. Remember, perfection is the enemy of greatness. If you fixate too long about making the best thing possible for the time being, you're never going to be able to let yourself accept what good work you can already do and then continue to grow. If you feel like you need to be perfect right now, you're going to be stuck in that spot for a long time. You need to accept that what you're doing right now is the best you can offer and 
hopefully you'll get even better. And the number one tip to keeping creativity going is to not think about being creative. Now, this sounds kind of contrarian, but stick with me here. When actors and performers and creative types tend to be in a dry spell, we tend to get into a negative feedback loop. That is, we keep telling ourselves that we're not doing anything. You know, it's the classic pink elephant example. If I tell you right now, don't think about a pink elephant, guess what? You're gonna think about a pink elephant. Similarly, if you tell an actor that they haven't done anything for about a month or two, guess what they're gonna be thinking about the rest of that month? The fact that they haven't done anything for a month or two. So if you're in that kind of headspace right now, the easiest way to get out of it is throw yourself into anything else. And I don't mean creatively. I mean, go watch your favorite TV show. Go to a million different sports games. Go hang out with your friends at the beach for a day or two. Anything and everything to put you into your happy place. Because when you're in that happy place, chances are your brain is gonna start going off of that high of endorphins and serotonin. And even that outside interaction with other people can inspire and spark new ideas that you weren't gonna have sitting by yourself in your room just focused and fixated on the fact that you haven't done anything. So by not being creative, guess what? You're gonna be even more creative. So those are five tips to help keep your creativity going. I hope that helps anyone out there that's going through a creative slump. Remember, there are seven billion people plus on this planet. Chances are someone's going through what you're experiencing right now. So don't worry, you're not the only one to have gone through this. Other people have gone through it. Other people have come out on the other side even better. I'm sure you will too. You just have to give it time find ways to cope with it, find ways to move on from it, and find ways to improve upon it. But thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I play games on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, Friday evening, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and I love talking to anyone that swings by. So if you want to talk to me about your creative process or anything about this, any questions that you have about these tips, by all means, feel free to reach out. I am more than happy to talk to anyone and everyone about this kind of stuff. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!